on your WhatsApp. Huh? Done. Yes, found. We are live. Okay. Namaste, everyone. Uh, I welcome you to the Global Yoga Festival. Uh, in the beginning, I'll, uh, I will request you all to close your eyes, place your hands in Nanudra on your knees, and just take a few calming breaths. I will be chanting Om. You can chant with me. Oh. Oh. Um. Join your hands in prayer. Yoga na chitta sya pade na vacha malam sharira swaydhya ke na yopa karotam pravaram muni na. Patanjalim Pranjali Ranatosmi. Open your hands, create warm, place them on your eyes. Slowly open your eyes. Yes. So uh, I welcome you all to Global Yoga Festival, which is conducted every Saturday and Sunday at 6 to 6.40 Indian Standard Time. So uh, Swasti Yoga Center started a year-long uh, celebrations to commemorate 75 years of independence with uh, various yoga and cultural activities. So the attendees uh, will get to learn about the ancient art of detoxifying our body, mind and soul. So yoga is a personal introspective activity, a centering oasis of serenity and amid the chaos of life. So we accept, expect uh, more than 2000 participants from nearly 35 countries. So uh, today we have uh, Dr. Ashwin Arun Masulkar. So he was born in 1959 in Mumbai. He, uh, he did his schooling from Bombay Scottish School and uh, the, he went to Elphinstone Elf uh, College. So he got his MBBS from Seth GS Medical College and KM Hospital and then MS General Surgery from Topiwara National Medical College. So after exper uh, experience, he, he got was as a senior registrar Bhagwat, uh, Bhagwati Municipal Hospital and senior registrar Malad Municipal o o Hospital. So uh, he held posts in the past, past executive committee member, the member and sectional coordinator of National Committee for Guidelines for Minimal Access Surgery and initiative of Max Hospital, New Delhi. And third was the past vice president of South Zone of IAGES and then past secretary of IAM, uh, IMA, Goka Go Go Bank. And then past uh, co co and co FIAGES board, Indian Association of Gastrointestinal Endosurgeons. And then past EC member, Hernia Society of India, past uh, core committee member of AWR Surgeons Community. So professional life in 1998, along with uh, his wife, Dr. Seema Masurkar, a gynecologist, joined the surg surgical maternity hospital his parents had set up in Gokak, a rural area in Belgao district in the state of Karnataka. 
so a, a pioneer in advanced laparoscopic surgery in belgium district and north karnataka so the awards he won was mahadevan award for the be for the best paper on com combined laparoscopic cholecystectomy and splenectomy at the karnataka state association of surgeons of india then the second was the vijayanagar award for best paper for laparoscopic adaptation of stopa repair for ventral hernia a low cost yet effective option for rural areas so uh, international faculty invitation he got was from aphs dubai in november 2018 and his uh, original research work uh, was devised a new innovative technique for ventral incisional hernia repair and laparoscopy transabdominal retromuscular repair so uh, he was invited to a lot of lectures and he has had uh, many publications and uh, live surgical demonstrations as well so conference also uh, he attended was from cme in minimal access surgery uh, fiags again medico legal cme me so so his special interests are in advanced laparoscopic surgery laparoscopic hernia repair and uh, laparoscopic common bile duct exploration video recording of operations and editing so his mission in life is he is passionate about performing advanced laparoscopic surgical procedures at a rural setup and improving equipment to deliver advanced healthcare to the rural masses so he is keen to train surgeons and motivate them to advance themselves in min minimal access surgery so his hobbies include gardening cycling photography yoga singing playing the guitar and cooking yes so uh, on with you dr ashwin masurka sir should i start yes uh thank you vaidehi ji uh yeah i think uh, you'll have to stop your screen share okay okay my presentation is there on your screen is my presentation seen yes sir we all can see okay <clears throat> yeah so thank you very much for having me here i am uh, uh, i go to teach everywhere but uh, uh, the thing is that here at swasti i came as a student and i am proudly a, a swasti student and uh, i it's made a world of a difference to my life uh, and uh, that's what i'd like to share with you on how it's changed my life so yoga and the surgeon i would like to talk about my journey and this journey would apply to several medical professionals anywhere in the world in any specialty uh, like i said my passion is uh, laparoscopic surgery which is also called keyhole surgery or minimal access surgery whereby uh, abdomen operations are uh, performed without making big cuts on the uh, abdomen we do it through small holes Uh, often called keyholes using uh, a visualization uh, a telescope called laparoscope so my uh, salutations om guru bhyo namaha so when you see yoga in surgery uh, i would uh, like to ask my gurus uh, sir which asana is this are you on sir <laughs> yes okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. so yeah so okay. now what, so what's going going on here is a laparoscopic surgery in progress you see two two images uh, that's uh, uh, me operating uh, a case of hernia uh, a hernia is uh, uh, usually <clears throat> a defect in the abdominal wall uh, due to which uh, the intestines and uh, uh, the abdominal contents come out of the abdominal wall and lie to lie under the skin it's painful it can happen uh, 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 when uh, due to a you know congenital or you know some inborn defect or it can happen after uh, any operation where the incision uh, has broken down especially after open operations so 
what's going on here is there's a telescope which has been passed uh, and uh, the man who's behind me is uh, holding a telescope and uh, showing me the structures inside i'm standing uh, to the left side of the patient you can see a nurse is standing in between the legs of the patient who's assisting me with the instruments uh, i've passed uh, long instruments into the abdominal cavity and we are performing the necessary operation so again my question <laughs> Which asana is this? So I'll call this a Shaila I have, I have answer, sir. This is a Ashwin asana. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is a, uh, a Shaila Chikitsa asana. So uh, this is a laparoscopic Shaila Chikitsa. Uh, I think uh, um, um, uh, it's quite clear. <laughs> so uh, in this particular case, what's happening is a uh, uh, hernia repair. And uh, this is that uh, technique which uh, was uh, mentioned, which uh, uh, was close to my heart and uh, pioneered it as a low cost technique so that uh, uh, it can, the same effective uh, repair can be done without taking a big incision on the abdominal wall so that it will cause less pain to the patient and can help the patient uh, recover fast. So this is the view in the operation theater at the bottom left of the screen. And this is uh, uh, the structure, how it looks inside and how the surgeon operates from outside. So, <clears throat> Shaila Chikits Asana, uh, is this a good asana? Any asana in yoga, we say, oh yes, it's a good asana. But is this really a good asana uh, for the patient? Yes, this is a very good asana because this patient would have had a huge incision about eight, 10 inches or maybe more on the abdominal wall. And we are doing this through small holes, uh, through keyholes, and the patient is get, going to have less pain, going to recover fast, going to re return to work very early. So for the patient, this is a great asana. But for the surgeon, is it a good asana? Think again. This is a very difficult asana for the surgeon and it's detrimental to the surgeon's health over years. If you look on the left screen, it's not just me operating with my hands. Even the feet have to activate certain pedals to uh, you know, put energy, to cut, to uh, seal blood vessels, to open up the tissue planes inside the abdomen. And both my hands are working. You can see my right shoulder, my right hand is lifted over the patient's body, uh, operating an instrument on the right side uh, and the left instrument also. And I'm looking at a screen and operating without a direct look. Uh, I don't have the vision of uh, the structures in front of me but I'm looking at a screen uh, away from me. Uh, somebody else has the vision in their hands. My, who, it's called the camera person. He's holding the laparoscope behind me, uh, colliding in my with my hand sometimes and showing me the structures. And I'm looking at the screen. So my eyes are not with me. My eyes are with my assistant. My hands are high up in the air. My shoulders are under strain. My, I have to hold my neck and keep staring at the screen which uh, my eyes uh, are strained. And uh, you can see the two pedals at the left image. I have to keep operating those pedals. And uh, virtually I'm balancing on one leg. So it's a kind of Nataraj pose. And uh, in this Nataraj pose, uh, you can become a nut when you do it uh, for many years. So then the question is, uh, surgeon, uh, how did he enter into yoga? So. This problem of uh, Shaila Chikit Sasana has very deleterious effects. So I had this passion. You can see signified by this passion fruit here. Uh, this technique and this work literally crushed me uh, so much that my juice was out and uh, uh, it had very bad effects on my health. And there was a fire which needed to be extinguished at the end of it all. So. I started my post-graduation in 1994, that's 27 years ago. Uh, um, very, very heavy work. Then I was in laparoscopic surgery right from the day I joined post-graduation. And then uh, I started practice in 1998. I've done now 24 years of practice. And if you see all the wear and tear that has caused on my body, it came to a situation where it was surgeon, heal thyself or you're in big trouble. So it started with... Uh, anxiety, work pressure, uh, kind of mild depression. There was eye strain. Uh, I had chronic neck pain. I had frozen shoulder. 
and uh, chronic shoulder pain, a lot of wrist pain because of a lot of strain on the wrist joints. There was knee pain because I would uh, balance on one foot and I would keep turning uh, the foot pedals which you saw in that photograph. There was constant low back pain because these operations uh, take much longer and uh, they have to be done very meticulously. So you're operating for four or five hours continuously. Then because of bending and uh, you sometimes in some operations wear heavy uh, clothing, uh, protective clothing, you, uh, there's uh, pressure on your back. And actually I was, you could say, short of an impending uh, burnout, you know. So I didn't just let this be, I took my problem very seriously. It's sad sometimes many health professionals uh, remain in denial. They say, no, I'm okay, I can manage, I'm just a bit tired, I'll take a break. But I said, what would I do if a patient came to me with these kind of problems? I said, I would have told him to seek professional help. So I consulted a psychiatrist and I consulted a psychotherapist. So I was advised, diagnosed as it is very mild, it's anxiety, work pressure, uh, the patient's demand is high. Your surgery is a very demanding kind of uh, exercise. That's causing a lot of uh, effect on you. So I'll give you these medications. It will make you less anxious. Uh, and you do medication and you do take, you start meditation. You start regular exercise and learn to relax yourself, reconnect with your hobbies, uh, de-stress a little, uh, reduce your workload. So... I said, wow. And then I was suggested that you uh, uh, get into mindfulness meditation. And then when I saw what all mindfulness meditation, relaxation, all that, and then I said, isn't this all yoga sadhana? So then I said, no, I must get into yoga in a more serious way, systematic way. And uh, uh, I do go and teach so many people. I said, let me do it in a way I can learn and I can teach others. So that's what landed me to Swasti Yoga Center Pune. And I was very lucky to find amazing gurus. Uh, what drew me here is that both gurus being doctors. Uh, doctor ki bhasha, doctor ko bhi samasta hai. Doctor ki samasya bhi, doctor hi samasta hai. So the doctors can understand the, my problems better. That's what was my calculation. And I proved to be absolutely dot on target. So the... Uh, I came, I just left my work. I stayed for 15 days in Pune. And uh, the first two days started with the social and spiritual touch. There was a very warm welcome at the yoga center and uh, it, the vibes were wonderful in the studio. And then I thank, thank myself and thank everyone that I left everything and came there rather than take an online coaching. Uh, being there is just so wonderful. So just on the second day, uh, we went on the social initiative that uh, our guru and guru ma do. They go to a government school and uh, teach uh, yoga, meditation. And uh, we went to the school uh, next to the Indrani uh, River, where this uh, very important uh, uh, temple is there. And uh, uh, this temple has ancient abhangas, which are written on the walls. And uh, 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 they were teaching uh, the students uh, mountain breathing, uh, akar, ukar, makar. And I said, wow, this is so relaxing. And uh, it was, uh, uh, you could see the students, you know, uh, stopped fidgeting. They would be very relaxed and calm. So I said, wow, this is something very powerful. And uh, then I later on involved it in my own life. And I found that uh, this omkar chanting uh, helps me focus. It helps me clear my brain fog. And uh, the vibration of this word OM, uh, you get a feeling of oneness with the universal conscience. So then I got one more spiritual answer. At that point of time, I told you earlier that I was on a point of uh, uh, feeling that, uh, I don't know, I don't feel like working. Should I retire? Should I just change my profession? You know, I was feeling burning out. So Acharya ji, uh, uh, who is also a very good storyteller, has written this beautiful book of Panchatantra Yoga Sutra. Uh, he, on the way back home, he showed me uh, this uh, very important uh, landmark uh, historical site called Bhakti Shakti, where uh, Shivaji Maharaj uh, had this moment that he wanted to leave everything and uh, uh, approached uh, Santji 
for advice that I want to become a Sant like you and I don't want to fight. And uh, uh, Dr. Vikas and uh, shared the story and uh, instantly it struck a note inside me and I learned a lesson that I can take a break, I can refresh, I rejuvenate, but I cannot abandon my purpose. I should complete yoga, uh, I'll get armed with uh, ways to reduce my stress and go back and go back to my purpose. So then the lecture started and I began to analyze uh, what is Patanjali Yoga Sutra and its relationship in surgery? So one by one, uh, every of the uh, eight limbs of uh, yoga had some very powerful message in them. So when I started reading Yama, so yes, we talk about Ahinsa. Ahinsa, from the surgical perspective, we always talk of first do no harm. This is a very important thing. That when your patient comes, if you can't cure him, it's okay. Don't harm the patient more. This has been told by so many surgical uh, people and it's there thousands of years ago. Patanjali Maharishi had written this about not harming. Satya, non-lying. We are supposed to hold the highest values of ethics. Whatever procedure as a surgeon I perform, I should tell the patient every, all the pros and cons and be honest and do it only if it is really beneficial to them. And I am not there to, uh, I should have the quality of asteya, non-stealing. I should hold all the models to the highest level, have the highest level of ethics and be, have a parigraha with me. I must have these observances or niyamas in my surgical skill, saucha, cleanliness, sterilization, absolutely important. Uh, if you don't have perfect cleanliness, you cannot expect the outcome of your surgery to be perfect. Santosha, you must be content. If you go after uh, uh, material wealth, just uh, link it to your surgical work, then it's, it can lead you in a very dangerous path. Tapas. Tapas is the zeal for yoga, but in our case, we need a zeal for our work. In surgery, we need to keep studying. We need to keep advancing our work. Uh, and uh, we should have this, uh, that surgery is actually a kind of a yoga, yoga sadhana, which we are doing, and it's a service, and we must have a, a zeal for it. There should be swadhyay, continuous medical or surgical education. Keep learning, keep learning what is new. Don't let uh, uh, you become, remain with older techniques, improve technically, give the best options to the patient, be, uh, improve yourself, keep reading, keep researching. And Ishwara Pranidhana, in the end, you do all your best and then you surrender to the universal conscience. Now, this concept, you know, rung a very powerful note in me and all the failures which I had had uh, uh, in, uh, we cannot always succeed. Even those uh, began to make sense and I began to see that, yes, I had to surrender my failures to the uh, almighty and the super conscience. And at the same time, when I have success, I should not jump and uh, develop an ego within myself that the success is all because of me. Asana, various poses. Surgery itself, Shailya Chikitsa, is you take various poses. You have to stand for long hours and you have to be absolutely perfect and absolutely you have to go on rehearsing uh, those poses so that you can perform these operations well. Breath. Prana, your breath, only a person or a surgeon or a doctor who has kept his breath and prana in good order can improve of the prana of a patient. Pratyahara, sometimes we need to withdraw all our senses and just go inwards, think inside, do a bit of self-analysis. Am I doing the best thing in my, in my work? Is this the best option for the patient? Uh, uh, is this, uh, should I, can I do it better? Introspect, what mistakes have I made? Can I improve upon them. Then dharana, when you operate, there's intense focus. You can't think of anything else but that patient because that patient's life is completely dependent on you. And next is dhyana, om, the state of meditation. Surgery is actually a kind of meditation. The involvement that it requires, it's a meditative state where you completely give yourself to the patient. That's how you can only become 
you become one with the patient's problem and become one and you forget everything else and yet at the end of it your practice in the surgical discipline or whatever skill you are doing as a surgeon should be so smooth that it should be prayatna shaitilya samapatti bhyam effortlessly one should be able to do surgery so this i said this was just a phenomenal lesson written thousands of years ago but so relevant today and there are such powerful niyamas and uh, 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 limbs of yoga and principles of yoga to even do your surgery by so when you look at the operation theater setup uh, patanjali maharishi talked about sthiram sukham asanam now we stand in this asana to do an operation and sthiram sukham an asanam which can be in peace and you can be hold it for a long period of time wow and i said this is what he it is means ergonomics you perform sometimes on the left side you see a company person sets up the setup in a way that you know you look up at the monitor screen you may end up hurting your neck a surgeon and now with study of ergonomics they found that the monitor should be below your eye level so that you know you look in a, your gaze is natural it prevents strain on the neck so this is ergonomics from you from marishi patanjali sthiram sukham asanam we need to stand for long hours we need core strength and flexibility and inspiration is on the left of the screen from the cobra and the replication is the bhujangasana which can give so much strength to the back give you core strength and that is madam demonstrating it and making sure i don't overstrain myself and the a part this is a small part of the entire for all round physical well being of a surgical professional is surya namaskar where there is mantra there is uh, breathing there is focus on various uh, uh, chakras of the body and there is core strength and there is strengthening and can give you uh, mental concentration as well as give you excellent physical strength so there are other lessons for which uh, we should be afraid of you know uh, there are kleshas which can come uh, in the uh, surgeon's life ignorance uh, ignoring new techniques ignoring what is the uh, uh, findings uh, going ignoring some histo- history or some complaint of the patient and getting biased by certain findings this is what we should be very careful of ego sometimes our patients ask us a lot of questions sometimes i too would often sometimes get angry and say is he challenging my capability so we have to release this ego and our desire which we have should be a very pure desire and that desire should be only to heal the patient aversion and fear of death fear of death is not just us sometimes we handle some very very serious patients and if we start fearing death then our hand will tremble and we will not be able to make a positive decision so when you look at healings of the surgeon i told you i was suffering from various problems anxiety eye strain neck pain shoulder pain wrist pain knee joint pain low back pain sciatica so what does one do with all of this and how did uh, uh, yoga yoga sadhana transform my life so i began Uh, to internalize whatever i learned from acharya ji and guru ma ji i before operating a case i said i should relax my mind i should not just jump into uh, 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 the operation theater i should take some time off sit alone connect with the universal conscience and remind myself that i am a nimith nimith as in the bhagavad gita or uh, uh, the uh, sanatan dharma hindu philosophy says we are just uh, nimith in christianity they say you are a channel for conveying god's work to the patient in islam they say zariya so at such a point listening to tanpura music on c sharp note uh, omkar chanting mountain breathing and uh, shambhavi mudra these are extremely powerful ways to relax your mind and like you do asanas you say certain preparatory asanas before doing so before shailya chikitsa asana these are the preparatory Uh, asanas which one can do and the preparatory phase that one can do before going into the operation theater the diet before an operation should be satvik ahara should be better on the right side should be 
uh, sprouts, some veggies, some protein like dal. Uh, should avoid fried stuff and high carbohydrate, which sort of make you a little dull and make your mind a little mudha during the surgical uh, uh, procedure. You want to be little less full. You don't want an absolute stomach full, but you just need enough to keep yourself going. So while operating, before when you wash your hands uh, and you uh, we wash up and scrub for a surgery, uh, I found the best way is we have to connect to the universe and connect with my guru, my, my, the guru who taught me surgery and say that his teaching is there with me and my experience is there with me and my yoga guru's teaching to keep myself calm is there with me. As I approach the theater door, I must remember that I should not carry any of my worries beyond the operation theater door as I enter. Now, this is inspired by a small thing, a uh, small little thing. If you fly by Indigo on the door of the flight deck where the, co the uh, pilot enters the cockpit as it's called. Today, they call it flight deck. It says flying is a serious profession. Do not carry your worries beyond this point. I said, wow, this is so powerful. Same thing applies for surgery. At the door, I cannot carry my worries beyond that point because it will directly affect the life of the patient I'm about to operate upon. Tanpura music, C sharp is again uh, very um, calming to the mind. You have to be in a state of awareness. You're completely aware of what you're doing, what you're operating on, who is the patient, are you got the right patient inside, are you fully aware of what he's suffering from, are you aware again that whatever you're going to do is the correct choice for this patient. And you have to enter a state of ekagrata where you're completely, completely immersed in just that one task of operating and doing a good job for the patient. After you do an operation, there can be certain difficulties. There is anxiety. Some of your assistants may make mistakes. The patients may have intraoperative medical problems. You may have some anxious moments. So there is a lot of stress you come out with because operation is just the first beginning. And then they have to be, there is a post-operative care. You have to help them uh, recover. That can be stormy sometimes if the patient is, has some medical problems along with their surgical issue. You're completely exhausted because I showed you how we operate in uh, minimal access or laparoscopic surgery. So the best thing what you can do is just go into your separate tomb do Shavasana with some background music. Uh, S Vyasa relaxation Guruji uh, taught me, which is very effective. Um, and Yoga Nidra, where you can get the feeling of having slept for a couple of hours. Just you can do it in a few minutes. You can make yourself completely relaxed. So these were very powerful ways for me to relax. And the Yoga Nidra is a full detailed book by uh, Swami Satyananda Ji of the BR school and so many more books. And there's also a YouTube uh, giving a full commentary, both in English and uh, uh, as well as Hindi by Swami Niranjan Anand. And whoever wants to use it uh, can just play the thing in the background and uh, uh, do this exercise of Yoga Nidra. And then there is back pain. Back pain, you've held yourself in that position continuously. And your focus has been doing the operation. You've forgotten that you have taken, you have bent your back, you have strained your back, you have turned your back in all sorts of positions and not realized. So Shavasana itself helps you relax those muscles which have undergone spasm. Tadasana helps you release that spasm. Triyak Tadasana breaks the spasm of the paraspinal muscles. And finally, the uh, pose and counter pose of Bhittilasana and Marjari Asana, cow pose and cat pose. Uh, typically, when you see a cat wakening up from its slumber, uh, it gets up and does that stretch where it arches its back into Marjari Asana. And you see Bhittilasana where you look up. These were magical in relaxing my spine. And mind you, there are physiotherapists and, uh, uh, you know, uh, on YouTube channels uh, from uh, overseas who, uh, who uh, call these poses out as if their own unique and special uh, techniques when actually they are pure Indian ancient knowledge which was with us for thousands of years, all brought to us by so many yoga gurus over the centuries. So then uh, 
you still have when you go you have shoulder neck pain wrist knee and back pain so the way that this got solved was by doing shukshma vyama and uh, shukshma vyama was uh, uh, improved the microcirculation of the joints and the various ways of shukshma vyama which i don't need to elaborate all uh, watching this know very well are all familiar with shukshma vyama so shukshma vyama done in a gentle uh, smooth rhythmic manner um, are very effective the avoiding jerky movements so end of the day you've done the whole day and then what on earth do you do you got uh, stress your whole mind is just full of stress so uh, shweta madam taught me this uh, uh, powerful uh, uh, verse of uh, listening to uh, nirvana shatakam uh, the audio and doing shavasan with that background so what happened is with nirvana shatakam you actually empty your cup and you detoxify your mind and uh, i'm sharing this uh, 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 slip shot uh, screenshots from uh, uh, shri uday shreyas on the sanskrit channel who has given a beautiful translation of the uh, nirvan shatakam who which was recited eight year old uh, great yogi adi shankara acharya ji uh, centuries ago which basically says reminds you that i am not the mind i am not intellect forget my identity forget or release your sense of hearing taste and smell i am not space earth fire i am the embodiment of eternal bliss i am shiva shiva as in the universal conscience so i am neither prana i am not five components of air i am neither basic seven elements of the body neither the pancha kosha i am not organs of speech locomotion procreation ext excretion i am an embodiment of the universal conscience and i am releasing i am emptying myself and i am just becoming one with the universe i am just an extension of the universe i don't have aversion or attachment to whatever has happened today whether the surge patient gets well doesn't get well i am detached i have done my job and then i am living the leaving the universal conscience to do uh, his their duty the conscience will come and heal i don't have want to possess success of what i have done today and i am not bound by whatever happens beyond my duty and i am the embodiment of the universal conscience and that's what i need to remind myself and i am not to be in a state of happiness that i performed some great operation nor am i to be in sorrow that my operation didn't go off as well as it should have gone i am not some holy place nor am i uh, you know uh, a consumer or uh, i am just eternal bliss and i am just the extension of the great god in the uh, universe and i should not doubt about my mortality i should not discriminate in my birth i should i am just uh, an atman and i have just come to do my job on this world and i have to just take out all this empty my cup in shavasana pose and remove all the detach attachment that has happened throughout the day and only then can you keep be at peace and sleep peacefully or else all this while i used to carry over all the tensions of the hospital into my home and it had completely invaded my life and my wrecked my life and uh, i had made been too attached to my work and then i have to thank two of my classmates uh i have to thank laura ji for motivating me at one time i felt i just quit yoga and she was the one who motivated me to get back and the thing which i saw is i said my god someone from spain can come and stay in pune for 6 months and get into uh, yoga which is a part of my culture here in india and she values it so much and she you know speaks so highly of it and what am i doing i felt so stupid she was chanting the mantras and doing surya namaskar i said look i'm i'm a jerk i got to get back so thank you to her for helping me get back uh, whenever uh, uh, guru ji takes his classes invariably i'm in the operation theater so i miss his lectures and sometimes i miss the downloads on uh, we transfer and uh, niyam uh, kiyogan ji was so kind to share her entire massive a uh, beautifully written exhaustive notes of hundreds of pages she shared just she asked everybody do you want uh, share your email and she was so sweet and so kind she just shared it with me so yes you was heard in the previous side that i quit i quit yoga why 
because I am a typical surgeon type A personality. I said, I'm not progressing. I'm stiff. I can't remember all these mantras. And I said, I just can't get into this. It's just we're not working out for me. So uh, Nachari Ji had uh, shown this slide of Ikigai. And uh, he said, uh, I think you're pushing yourself too much. Uh, Remember, uh, uh, Maharishi Patanjali said, Thiram Sukham Asanam means what asan you can hold peacefully, comfortably. It's not an asan that you should touch your toes. You should, there is some hard and fast pool. So do it in a way, do it to the extent. You run your race, don't do beyond it. When the asan is, makes you ashant and makes it difficult and make you, make you, makes a dukham asan, make it sukham asan. So he said, find your Ikki Ghai. And Madam said, Tumala Shikaila Itki Ghai Kaya hai. So Itki Ghai means in Marathi, don't hurry. So she told me, take it slow. Don't hurry up. Your, some people may take time to progress. Uh, some people may take time to overcome the stiffness. If you can't remember, just go with the flow and slowly it will come to you. And then the most powerful of all, Guruji told me that, uh, first, practice ahimsa towards yourself. Ahimsa is not about do no harm to others. First, see that you don't push yourself beyond your limits and harm yourself and hurt yourself in the process. So these lessons were like absolutely powerful. So for me, this pathway to wellness and peacefulness has started. And yoga sadhana has enhanced my physical, mental, emotional and spiritual well-being. My beautiful journey has just begun. And my message to healthcare professionals is join the yogic path because we have to heal the healers. We can't have, if you look at the statistics abroad, you read articles, you'll see so many people and so many medical professionals are facing burnout and they have just quit. And we are losing people who have highly experienced, highly trained, just because they lost their sense of purpose. Luckily, I found yoga, I found wonderful gurus and I got on this path and the healer could be healed. So I thank my gurus. And this is a very powerful photograph. I shared it in the beginning, but I'm giving you some more insight into this. Uh, you can see uh, uh, Maharishi Patanjali is there uh, blessing us. And from the left to right, you see Guruji is a practitioner and a postgraduate of Ayurveda. Madam is homeopathy and I am an exponent of allopathy. So we are united by a common goal of doing good health care and a common goal of doing yoga. And rather than keep fighting about why, which speciality and which system of medicine is better, we can respect one another, respect each one's shortcomings and look at what the other system can offer better than I can offer and vice versa. And we can all be blessed by uh, Maharishi Patanjali and we can do the best for our patients. And in the meanwhile, I became close to their family. And I read a non-yoga lesson from a non-formally untrained yogi uh, is Guruji, Guru Pita Shri, Shri Rajendra Chote Ji and from Guruma. Uh, he has got a passion of cycling and he, without being a formally trained yoga, he does everything that a yogi needs to do. He's absolutely fit. He's uh, cycling at the moment en route to Kathmandu. He shared this photo after reaching from Pune to uh, Khajuraho. And uh, uh, he just loves to be doing something active. So even by habits and beads, one can be a yogi without a, forming, a formal yoga training. And Guru uh, Ma performed, uh, uh, makes wonderful, that is uh, our Acharya Ji's mother, performs, uh, uh, makes a wonderful Sattvic Ahara and encourages the yogic life, way of life in her home. And we are standing... Uh, in front of a wonderful painting of uh, done by uh, Dr. Vikas Ji. Uh, it's just outstanding. Every time I see the painting, I get mesmerized. And I thank uh, Deepali Ji for all the coordinative efforts. And I thank you for this uh, uh, wonderful opportunity. I thank my dear listeners. If there's any question, feedback, both are welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, let's have a round of applause. It was a very nice presentation about yoga and you.
<laughs> so if anyone wants to uh, say anything, please unmute. Uh, I guess Neve is also there, so I would like to welcome Neve. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Neve, uh, Lionel, all your colleagues are there. Sam <laughs> yeah. is also there, Sima ji. Namaste, madam. Namaste, namaste. <laughs> so for the first time, uh, you are meeting our family, Swasti family, with so many... Uh, uh, colleagues, <laughs> young colleagues, young at heart, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, na Namaste, Ashwin. Yes, na Namaste. Yes, Namaste. Yes, I call you Ashwin because we are just two young together. Yeah, at the same yoga class. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but but also I have a lot of respect uh, for you, as because when um, your testimony. It's very important. And it's really what is the, the sense of the yoga on what what is the yoga in your own own life? And it's very, very interesting. And uh, yes, I'm very happy to listen to you today. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank, you. Thank you. Yes, I, I really feel if um, you want to have a certificate, okay? Yeah. The real certificate is the smile that you can see in, on, on, uh, on the face of both these yogis. <laughs> and, and then I think as youngsters, we, all the youths have to learn that <laughs> the first important thing is come what may in life, we have to be in this state of uh, being in a complete state of uh, happiness, right. however we are, wonderful. So uh, I hope I have, uh, uh, you know, carried forward the message that you wanted to teach me, really. It took me some time to realize and for everything to sink in. But whatever you have taught, I'm trying uh, my best to uh, bring it into my life and bring it into professional as well as my personal life. And it's uh, made a huge difference to me. Uh, uh, the energy levels have improved. And uh, I was taking anti-anxiety medication. And I can tell you, I'm off all anti-anxiety medication right now. It's just uh, whatever I shared just now, those powerful tools that uh, uh, you gave me and uh, the experience that I got at uh, Pune at your home and your studio. Uh, I don't know, I cannot, there are no words to describe that warmth and positive energy. Uh, just no, no words. I mean, I, I choke uh, when I think of that year. It's one year now, time uh, flies very fast. Uh, uh, but it's just wonderful to be a part of the Swasti family. Thank you. I hope uh, many surgeons and healthcare professions, professionals uh, learn from you because uh, I myself was in surgery and uh, so I was, I was, I'm a physical therapist. So he let me look at my surgery, the TV and everything. Okay. And I like I could see the environment and everyone, the juniors right. were afraid and uh, the senior was just like, I hope yoga reaches them, right. everyone. Right. So, so uh, like uh, I've been uh, training a lot of people all over the country uh, in laparoscopic surgery, which is my professional speciality. So I realize now that uh, there's a very peculiar thing which happens, you know, when you are young, you are a young doctor and uh, surgery is something where even as a patient, you want to choose an experienced senior, someone who's got experience and a specialist in that field. So you don't have much work, so much work when you're a young, newly practicing surgeon. As time goes, your, you know, your success uh, gets known and then there's a kind of a, uh, 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 you know, a chain reaction which happens and your work gets recognized your work gradually goes on increasing. And mind you, over 20 years work goes on increasing, but your age is advancing. So your point, your stiffness is coming, your body is getting tired, you can't operate. So how can one stay physically fit and young? What's the use if you have a highly experienced mind? 
the you know then it shouldn't happen that experience is like a comb which you acquire when you have become bald so uh, you have to retain retain that hair and you have to retain that youthfulness and retain that elasticity strength and you can't allow yourself to physically age or mentally age you have to keep and the only way really to do it is to get into yog sadhana and uh, uh, you know do these secrets so for me before i advise and before i tell my colleagues first i had to be that and i have to become a, a level pass my level 2 which i'm now uh, striving to do first <laughs> and uh, um, so once i learn that then i can start uh, uh, you know bringing this uh, to all my colleagues and making them aware that uh, there is one wonderful powerful tool right here which is there as ancient knowledge in our country by which you can keep yourself fit and completely mentally physically you can be you know a super uh, athlete because that's what we have to be we have to be we are like a, a super athlete we are a warrior but we are a peaceful warrior and we have to be able to get attain that level and that's only possible through uh, the yogic uh, way of life and it's impacted me so much so uh, i have to learn i have to be that and if i have to see change i have to first be that change so this is my first step that i'm trying to take to be a change and then i'll spread this message definitely thank you so i would ask thank you kasto to felicitate <laughs> thank you thank you so much was, uh, yeah we are the kids uh, we are uh, so called like we both are like kids to uh, ashwin ji but still <laughs> but still he has the humility to accept us and uh, yes we cannot felicitate but this is just our uh, love and respect from the whole swasti yoga family to uh, ashwin ji and uh, uh, and um, to her beloved and better half so it was because of her support that ashwin ji could <laughs> come here and uh, we had the privilege um, to be together Yeah. so i would request everyone to unmute themselves and give a big round of applause to sir <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you and uh, i would say uh, uh, you you can't uh, felicitate uh, you have felicitated more than felicitate you have facilitated you have facilitated a new discipline to enter me because if you if you look at a traditional typical uh, allopath he will uh, frown on any other system but his you know it is true yeah and uh, uh, we have to respect that each system has drawbacks and other systems has something better to offer in certain things for every system and uh, uh, you have facilitated me to completely transform my life and that is the greatest felicitation i have got and uh, i have shared everything which i uh, you know uh, messages which i received from you how it touched every part touched my life so i didn't want to generally lecture somebody i it is uh, i started with uh, my journey of looking inwards and thinking and rethinking and rejuvenating and this was the ultimate rejuvenation i got through this journey so i have to thank you uh, big time for the big impact you had in my life thank you actually we are blessed to have you sir <laughs> it's a great uh, it was a great time whenever we were there the, that time last year we spent a lot of time together and it's amazing it was a amazing days actually we enjoyed each and every moment <laughs> from sitting on the ground <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's a wonderful actually it's a wonderful yeah. journey and whenever i see your big smile it's everything <laughs> right 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 <laughs> Okay, that's it. So nice yeah. to be kind of you, and uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, uh, it's nice to uh, come back and share. And uh, uh, I've been uh, uh, encouraged and prodded by Acharya Ji and uh, Acharya Guru Ma Ji also that uh, I should uh, uh, write all this in the form of a book and publish it so that uh, all healthcare professionals uh, um, uh, it touches their lives. and uh, they can use this ancient wisdom which we have here and there are so many and such wonderful and such powerful 
uh, tools which you can uh, which can impact your life to be a better healthcare professional because unless we are at the peak we cannot expect to deliver the best treatment to our patients so whether it be a nurse or a physiotherapist or any any uh, branch of uh, discipline or of uh, healthcare they need it first uh, desperately need it and after covid a lot of burnouts lot of depression among doctors and lot of people have lost their focus and this is the only way which can come back and you know once again uh, uh, see that the uh, 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 physician and is at the top level of uh, or a healthcare provider is in the top level of health can provide excellent help and can make an impact in the healthcare society thank you thank you great okay so, so Great. <laughs> We are done. Uh, our meeting ends now. Uh, yeah, we have yeah, uh, some three important uh, announcements, yeah. and uh, I would like to invite uh, Lionel G because, uh, like, <laughs> uh, he is the one instrumental behind uh, this beautiful announcement that we are going to make. Uh, Swasti Yoga has an association. We call it as Swasti Yoga Workers. I hope I am spelling it right. And Swasti Yoga Association is now um, formally um, uh, registered and is uh, with the French government. And uh, soon we would be having different initiatives of promotion and propagation of these uh, wonderful yoga practices and the philosophy of yoga um, in different aspects in France and uh, gradually in Europe. So I would like to invite uh, Lionel G. And everyone, please give a big round of applause for his efforts. Thank you. I would, uh, yes, I, yeah. yes, you know, I, I'm very happy to, to create this association in France because uh, it just, uh, you know, I, I follow you since uh, two years, no. And today I, I completely understand what is yoga and what is, what is yoga in my life. And day after day, slowly, slowly, uh, I think I progressed the in my, my own path on yoga on really what is the aim of my life. And today I quit this association and, uh, and I'm very happy that you are agreeing that I use the Zvasti Yoga board <laughs> for my association. <laughs> yes, because it, uh, it just a uh, thing for me, it's uh, very important. And uh, today I, I would like to wants me to, uh, to explain uh, for French people what is really yoga and what's, uh, what's the yoga could help us in their life. It's a, exactly that uh, Ashwin said. Yes, and uh, I'm very happy to try with little, little contribution for yoga. Thank you. Yes, so the next uh, Saturday will be uh, Career Opportunities for Youth in Yoga by Ashwini Sabre. And Sunday will be uh, the topic on Health Education, Need, Challenges and Prospects India uh, by Piyush Agarwal. So I hope I call you again to join next Saturday, Sunday. So let's end with a prayer. Uh, before we end, a small announcement again. Sorry for the interruption. Okay. <laughs> uh, on behalf of all the students who have um, qualified uh, the recent yoga certification board examination, because uh, we know like uh, since childhood, we have been um, used to the kind of examinations with 35% pass, 50% passing. <laughs> but this is an examination with 70% as a passing criteria, which seems to be quite challenging and tough. And we are very happy that um, uh, all our students have uh, passed out with flying colors. So uh, hearty congratulations to all of them. And as a topic, I would invite you uh, to say a few words and uh, congratulations for scoring the highest marks. <laughs> Again, once more. So, Neve, if you are there, I would just love to hear more from you. 
and your experience. Hello, hello, Neem. Uh, I think she's not connected. I just texted her on Zoom. She she was there, no? For the session. Her messages were coming through. Yeah, I will just. Yeah, she was. Maybe the network problem was there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So maybe uh, we'll just uh, have the Shanti Mantra and if she is back, then we will have it. Okay, sure. So everyone, uh, close your eyes. Hold your hands into prayer position. Oh, so Sahano Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Sarvavahai Tejas Vinavati Tumasum Mavit Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Rub your hands. Place them on your eyes. Thank you, everyone, for coming and attending. Thank you, Dr. Ashwin, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.